This is Doug Field along with my co-host Ron Bachman, and welcome back to this segment of Healthcare Consumerism Radio as we continue our dialogue around celebrating, you know, uh, 10th anniversary of HSAs, and certainly uh, one individual that was at the forefront and at, at, at the foundation at the beginning of HSAs. Uh, in fact, she uh, got involved with HSAs because of her family business, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we welcome to this program uh, Beverly Gossage uh, with HSA Benefit Consulting. Beverly, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be with you. Yeah, good to have you with us. And uh, I should tell our audience also that Beverly is a Republican candidate uh, running for insurance commissioner of the state of Kansas. Congratulations on that and good luck with that. Thank you very much. You've got to be careful about that. You know, the uh, past insurance commissioner wound up being governor and now is in the hot seat up in Washington as head of HHS. I hope to change that pattern here in the well, land of Oz. Well, I, if we you follow that pattern, it would be, be good. You legacy. could be there. <laughs> I, I'd like for you to follow that pattern, become governor, and then uh, you know, straighten out Washington for us. <laughs> have no intention of becoming governor. Just want to fix the insurance department <laughs> and work as a member of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, whom you may know had a huge influence in model legislation mm-hmm. in Obamacare. Right. Yeah. Talk to us, Beverly. G- give us a little historical perspective from your uh, seat on uh, the evolution of HSAs and then bring us to today and what you see you know, moving forward. Well, sure. Very quickly, as you mentioned, my family owns a plumbing company, 17 employees in Lawrence, Kansas. I was district manager for Sylvan Learning Centers, and they had asked if I could help them do some research to figure out what they were going to do with these 27% annual increases that they kept experiencing. And so in my research, I found medical savings account plans, and my sister as an accountant thought it was a great idea as well. But when I called the Department of Insurance, they said, MSA what? Well, I don't (laughs) know what that is. And you may want to call the insurance carriers. We don't know what products they offer. So that started me on this journey, and as I began to contact these carriers, uh, and this was December of 2012, by the way. When I began contacting the carriers, I found two, Starmark and Assurance, that would offer these policies, but they'd never really done a group plan. They'd done a few self-employed people. As you know, MSAs were the precursor to HSAs, and they were temporary. So it was like a one-year legislation that continually said, well, we'll renew that for another year. So a lot of carriers didn't pick up on it. Who wants to go to a lot of trouble creating products for something that may go away in a year? So uh, I did talk to them about possibly doing a group plan for my family's company. They were open to the idea, had no agents that really specialized in that. That was really it for me. I saw this as a new mission as an educator. I needed to help others like my family's company find out why they're paying way too much to the insurance company and put more money in their own pocket and be better consumers. So I got my license, helped my family's company, found out later to, as far as I know, They are the first full replacement group MSA, now HSA, in the country. So shortly after Castle Plumbing had this policy, I started looking at all those restrictions. And, you know, there wasn't much available to read Mm -hmm. about MSAs. Uh, I found Ron Bachman. And, Ron, I know you're on this uh, (laughs) call, and you're one of my heroes in the consumer (laughs) healthcare world. He's one of ours, too, Beverly. Okay. Careful, my head's getting too big. (laughs) And uh, Michael Cannon and uh, John Goodman and some of the others that had papers out there, Regina Herzlinger, I began reading some of their papers, their blogs, et cetera, not much but some about MSAs and started talking about how we could take off some of the restrictions and some that concerned me for my family's company. Um, However, kind of overnight I became this MSA expert, Mm -hmm. if you will, and was asked to speak at the local chamber, Kansas Chamber, NFIB, FCA, And as I would call the um, Department of Treasury, they would always connect me to Roy. And that's how we became friends. And I would ask about clarifications. We talked about the law, talked with folks at Luminos about, now there's this possibility we could take off some of these restrictions, go from MSAs to HSAs. I was so excited about the idea. I said, what could I do to help? When this law was finally passed, through a big celebration, yay, contacted all my clients who were waiting in the wings who wanted an HSA the moment it was passed. So January 1st, I started flooding all these applications in for people who had not self-insured or not necessarily a small group, couldn't wait for an HSA-qualified plan. About March, I got a phone call, and 
a phone call from, actually it was a fax from Assurance Health saying, Beverly, please stop. Quit sending in all these applications. This hasn't been approved in Kansas. I went, what are you talking about? It was, it's a federal law. Yeah, but see, they have to approve it. So they're saying they don't have the tax advantage there. So we can't write these yet. I said, wait a minute. These people have accounts for three months. Hmm. So I uh, contacted the Department of, Tr- of uh, Insurance. They said, we don't know much about this. You should call this person who might be in charge of that new law possibility. Um, so I said, what can I do? They said, can you testify tomorrow? So that began this long line of testifying, of course, not only in Kansas but elsewhere, about why we needed to go from MSAs to HSAs. So it's kind of this, this history of how I became involved. I have uh, been an agent now since December of 2012. I've yet to write a policy that was not HSA qualified. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. And Beverly, um, you really raise um, uh, another concept which we hadn't talked about so far, and that is MSAs. You know, in any industry, you have all these letters, these alphabet soup uh, right. uh, d- descriptions, and we haven't talked about um, uh, MSAs. So you've actually taken us uh, before the beginning of the legislative history that we talked about with Roy on health savings accounts, and I think it's really important that you bring that up because in 1997, there was legislation passed on something called medical savings accounts, which was a compromise with uh, Senator Ted Kennedy's interest in not having this and Newt Gingrich's interest, who was speaker at the time, of having some sort of an account-based plan. And the driving force, and if you go to the what I would call the headwaters of the Nile <laughs> as to who really started this thing uh, you know, rolling, it was a fellow named Pat Rooney who is no longer with us. He passed away a number of years ago, and he was um, uh, chairman CEO of um, Golden Rule which yeah. was the really strong proponent of medical savings accounts yeah. for Sonia individuals. And mm-hmm. so, you know, in this celebration, I mentioned that as we were talking about people getting their insights, and I said, well, the real person would be great to have is Pat Rooney, and unfortunately he's not here. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get somebody from Golden Rule to input to this uh, historical perspective. But the fact that you were What's out there. What's rather sad is here is Golden Rule, who's one of the pioneers, of course, of these plans. Mm-hmm. And I just discovered that they are going, that they, uh, as of January 1, will stop offering individual private policies in mm-hmm. Kansas. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's. So uh, that well, ends those who want HSAs from them. And that, that is eliminating much of a, the competition that's been available through Obamacare. Well, when you become Granted, commi- that's you, another story. When you yeah. become but insurance commissioner, um, invite me out. I've got a whole lot of good ideas to make uh, Kansas an HSA uh, state uh, in spite of uh, the limitation of the Obamacare. That so. is my goal. All right. We've had some legislation that I pioneered that has gotten passed here. We now have the HSAs available to state employees. Um, so we are certainly working on that. That's great. Now, where do you see some of this going in terms of uh, the ability for HSAs to be sold under the Obamacare um, restrictions, legislation, and regulations? Well, I could use Kansas as an example. Uh, Everybody wants to talk about the exchange, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I started about three and a half years ago working with now uh, Commissioner Sandy Prager, who is, by the way, Kathleen Sebelius' best friend. (laughs) Um, That's all you need to know about that. (laughs) And she uh, was really wanting to implement this and be an early innovator in implementing an exchange in Kansas. I wrote a paper that was placed on Americans for Prosperity's website about why we did not want to be an innovator, especially with the conflict of the fact that we were part of the 26 state lawsuit Mm -hmm. against this and gave all the reasons why. Thankfully, Sam Brownback, Jeff Collier both listened and returned that an innovator grant money. Um, I say that to say this. So we have a federal exchange. In the federal exchange, if you could get on to buy a policy, which is wink, wink, there you would find there were two carriers available. That would be Coventry and Blue Cross. Both of them offer one HSA-qualified plan. That plan is a $6,300 deductible. Well, I have people asking me all the time for even larger deductibles because of the limitations put on the deductible by HSAs. Mm -hmm. They said, why can't I have a $10,000 deductible and still have an account? Why are they limiting that? We can talk about that in a moment. However, just to give you a perfect example, I've spent several days doing research running actual quotes. If you were to buy a policy today on the open market in Kansas and then you were to buy one in the exchange, 
you would discover that you can currently get a $5,000 deductible HSA qualified plan, very popular, through the same carrier with the same providers, and find that your premium, I'm going to use a 27-year-old, which is what they use as an example for uh, the exchange, and their premium would be about $48 to $52 a month. Mm-hmm. Now, t- due to Obamacare and some of the preventive wellness the, uh, presentations that they put in it, it moved it up to about $60 a month for December 1. However, January 1, that moves up to $136 a month. Mm-hmm. And you go from a $5,000 deductible to a $6,300 deductible. Hmm. Um, Does Kansas have a high-risk pool? Kansas does have a high-risk pool. We have about 2,800 people in that high-risk pool. It was working very effectively. Kansas has some of the lowest rates in the country. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason is because we still have an active risk rating with an unlimited ratio. For For your listeners, of course... That what that means is is that Obamacare has implemented a three to one ratio right. of the twenty year old up to the sixty four year old, right. and that the differentiation between that those two stratas will be three to one. Mm-hmm. Well, now in Kansas there is no determination that can be one hundred to one. Mm-hmm. So you see people who are very young who have. $48 premiums for their $5,000 deductible. However, I wrote one for a 63-year-old a couple of days ago, and this was for her policy that would have started today for November 1st for $168 a month. We have had wonderful, low insurance policies here because we, number one, do not require normal maternity. We only have 46 mandates compared to 72 in some states. In fact, I helped to write a law called HB 2107 we passed last year, which is a mandate light bill that carriers could offer policies that do not include any of the mandates required as long as they indicate which mandates are not included. Of course, carriers are saying, great, thank you, but our hands are tied because Obamacare says all policies must include this. Hey, Beverly, uh, this is, uh, we really appreciate you being on this segment, and we've got about a minute to go, and I want to uh, sure. enable you, give you a chance to give our audience you know, some clear takeaways that you'd like to leave them with. Well, um, one of the things is that they may not know only 11 insurance commissioners are elected in this country. Hmm. The rest are appointed. So uh, I would appreciate help with www.beverlygossage.com. Um, anything that you could do to help us, because... As a free market person, and of course I believe in consumer-driven health care, being a voice on the National Association of Insurance Commissioners with federal legislation that affects all of us is extremely important, and I wanted to lead that way, as you said, make Kansas an HSA state. Absolutely. Thank you, Beverly, very much, and we'll uh, see you out west in Las Vegas. We look forward to that. Can't wait to see you all. Thank you. Take Bye-bye. care. And to our audience, uh, stay tuned for the final segment of Healthcare Consumerism Radio.